Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Borek, and this is going to be a quick reaction to the Reading Royals' OT loss to the Norfolk Admirals last night as they get a chance to avenge it tonight in Reading as I'll be covering that game for the great Flyers, Nitty Gritty, Jamie Bascal, and Yari Fulluck. I will link that account on the end screen to follow here. But let's get right into it. In the first period, Reading was outshot 13-9. In the second, 14-9. And in the third, just by one, 11-10. But even when it came to that, they were able to pot the first two goals. A very nice shot by Patrick Boschkoff, picking up right where he left off as a successful ECHL player, continuing down there, getting a shot and a goal for the Reading Royals. And then you had Grant Cooper being able to get a goal in the wide open net from McNally with the assist. After having a great preseason, Coop's able to get on the on the score sheet in the first game. And then we had two rebound goals that I think Pat Nagel would have wanted at least one of those two back. In Carl E. Moore scoring in front, which was assisted by Chase Lang, who scored later, and Anthony Collins. And then the next Norfolk goal was Alex Tong, assisted by Noah Corson, who I think Nagel would have wanted to have one of those rebounds back. See, normally with Reading the away games, I will see, I will listen to some of the radio and then watch the highlight stuff because I don't have the Flow TV yet. But when it came to seeing that on the highlight compared to uh, listening to it on the radio, I feel like he probably would have wanted one of those two rebound goals back. When it comes to the third goal, that was a beautiful setup by Joshua Winquist and then also Patrick Manali to get it to Winquist for the secondary assist to Matthew Strom in the slot, who was able to just snipe it on the power play. That's a beautiful spot for Strom to be. That's a spot that I expect him to dominate all season with the Reading Royal and get it done. And then you had an unfortunate goal, something you can't really do anything about. Chase Lang tried to pass the puck across on a two-on-one. It could have been a goal anyway, though, if that got to the other player. It would have been a tough save for Pat McNally. But it goes off of a skate and then goes into the net off of the defender. There's not much the goaltender can do about that one. And then when it came to the even strength goal, it was tough to see on the highlights, especially because I think the highlights are from the Admirals um, Flow TV broadcast, so they're not going to try to show it that much. But on the highlights, it's tough to see. But I think that was a high stick, because it looked like Alex Tong almost went up here, hit it, and then it deflected down, where it obviously wasn't as egregious as the plays that the Flyers did, where you're like, oh, why would you even put your stick up that high to do that, just to deflect it down to stop the play or whatever. But... That was a play that it looked like a stick, excuse me, brought it up here and brought it above the crossbar, and that's why he was able to then deflect it downward a little bit. Obviously, it was close. They called it a goal on the ice. That's how it standed, and that's how the Reading Royals got into overtime in the final one minute and 30-some, whatever it was, seconds that you were able to. That was at 18:21 in the third that they were able to equalize it with Alex Tong's goal. And then the Cody Millen goal was really nice for an OT. He, of course, deked for Norfolk, was really patient, everything coaching preaches, and then got in front of the net, held the puck, delayed, and was able to play it right into the back of the net from a perfect play in front of the net. So I think that was a really smart play by him to be able to pot that goal. That was a really nice goal of patience by... Um, by um, Cody Milan there to be able to kind of just put that in the net and tuck it home past Pat Nagel. This is a game that I think Pat Nagel is going to grow from here in Reading. It's his first game, even though he's a guy that's been around for a while, whether it's in the ECHL level or the AHL level. He's a guy that's still adjusting to being on a new team in a new organization, so it's going to take a little bit, but he didn't get helped, obviously, by the fact of he had one goal go off of the skate of a defender and then one that was probably a high stick, so he could have easily had two goals just allowed in this game, even though he probably would have wanted to have better rebound control. It's game one. It's something he's going to grow and he's going to learn from, he's going to build from in a new organization here, and the Reading Royals' key even after having that go off of the defender, even after having a goal that probably was a high stick, still were able to come out with a point and now have a chance for a vengeance tonight, as I will be doing a quick preview to that game here at the end of this video, as the Reading Royals are going to take on the Norfolk Admirals tonight as well and just get a chance to get revenge. You will have Kirill the Thrill, of course, Ustamenko, in net tonight, I would look for Grant Cooper to continue to have a great game. Bashkoff looked great. Uh, so did McNally in uh, preseason. So I would look for all those guys to continue to have a great game. And then we, of course, just need uh, Kirill Ustamenko in net to have a very productive, very solid game. 
and will be able to win, I think, and bounce back against Norfolk. That was a very nice, very fun, competitive game last night. Just unfortunately, our Reading Royals ended up on the wrong end of the stick. If you bring that pressure, you bring that Annie, you bring that good shooting mentality, and you have good shooters on this team. We saw it yesterday. You have good assist players and good potential scorers. You were able to get the four. Unfortunately, you just had some bounces not go your way and some calls not go your way in this game to result in losing in OT in last night's game. But the, tonight it's at home. You got a chance to avenge. You got a chance to really come in here and have a great game and be able to kind of stop them and be able to come in. Hopefully, I think Matthew Strom is going to be a key. He had four shots in game one. I think he's a player, again, that's going to be huge down here. Boshkov's a guy that can score like at lightning, so you want to keep trying to get him the puck. Those guys are going to be keys against this team, as well as Kenny Hosinger had a very good preseason wasn't really noticeable in game one, so let's see what he's going to be able to do in the first game at home, and then Grant Cooper continued his success from the preseason. So it's all about just playing, trying to generate a few more shots on net, of course, since the Royals were not more even with Norfolk until the third, but keep generating that good shooting mentality and keep getting those good scoring chances like they did against Norfolk last night. Have a couple other things go your way, and the Reading Royals are going to be able to bounce back and win tonight against Norfolk at home, a game that I will be covering again for Flyers Nitty Gritty that I'm going to link at the end of this video to follow their channel. Thanks again for the great opportunity, Yarif Wallach and Jamie Baskell. This has been a recap to the Reading Royals and Norfolk Admirals OT loss, plus a preview to tonight's game, the home opener in the 20th season for our Reading Royals, as they look to avenge the loss last night and beat those Norfolk Folk Admirals at home tonight. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Subscribe down below or up above to keep the channel going and growing. Let's go, Royals. Peace.